It was sometime in 2009 when two officials of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith in the Vatican were in the archives of the congregation perusing some old files. And they came across something which piqued their interest and ultimately startled them. The two men were Archbishop Augustin de Noya, a Dominican Archbishop from the Bronx in New York, and the other one was a young priest by the name of Monsignor Stephen Lopes, a priest of the Archdiocese of San Francisco who had become a, an official with the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. What they found in those files were hundreds and hundreds of letters, some of them dating back more than 30 years, letters from individuals and groups of Anglicans and Episcopalians mostly in the United States, but in other parts of the English-speaking world as well, petitioning the Holy See for a way to be in full communion with the Roman Catholic Church. These were, in large measure, dispossessed Anglicans and Episcopalians who were distraught over the state of the, the churches that they were in and realized that the church that they were in was founded on the, will, on the whim of a man, King Henry VIII, who separated himself from the true church. And so they went to their boss. The boss was the prefect of the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith, card, at the time, Cardinal William Leveda, and presented to him what they had found. And Cardinal Leveda's re reaction was, Pope Benedict needs to know about this. And so they arranged an appointment with the Holy Father. The two of them went in and presented to him what they had found in all of these hundreds of letters and said to him, Holy Father, this is a scandal because, and, and the thing that shocked them, the thing that scandalized them was that for the most part, the vast majority of the letters had not been replied to or even acknowledged. So imagine people pouring out their hearts over a course of 30 some years, petitioning the Holy See and hearing nothing in reply. The Holy Father agreed. And as a result of his agreement with that, he penned a, an apostolic constitution with the Latin title Anglicanorum Chaitibus. Anglicanorum Chaitibus means on groups of Anglicans, in which he made a way for these dispossessed Anglicans and Episcopalians to become Catholic. Pope John Paul II, years earlier, in the early 80s, had already set up what is known as the pastoral provision, which allowed for individual Anglican priests or, or Episcopal priests to come into the church and be reordained as Catholic priests. What Pope Benedict the, uh, the 16th set up in Anglican Norm Chadibus was he took that, uh, that discipline one step further in allowing for entire Anglican or Episcopal parishes to come into the church, even with married clergy. And so he charged, he turned around and charged um, Archbishop de Noya and Monsignor Lopes with the task of coming up with an ecclesiastical structure that would satisfy canon law that would allow for what he was asking to be done and he put the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith as the authoritative body over this new venture. And he did so with the words, as you execute this, be generous, be generous. That generosity came out in the, the form of the establishment of three ordinariates around the world in the, in the English-speaking nations of the world the ordinariate of Our Lady, the personal ordinariate of Our Lady of Walsingham in England, the personal ordinariate of Our Lady of the Southern Cross in Australia, and the personal ordinariate of the Chair of St. Peter here in the United States. The ordinariate of the Chair of St. Peter was established on January the 1st in the year 2012, just 11 years ago this past Sunday. <clears throat> and so, the point of all of this, the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention uh, at this Mass for the Repose of the Soul of Pope Benedict XVI, is to help you understand what a key role he played 
in the establishment of the ordinariate and in our parish's privilege of being able to come into the, uh, the Roman Catholic Church as a parish. He is, in, in very many ways, the father of the ordinariate. Without his action, there would be no ordinariate, and thus Christ the King Parish would not be a Catholic parish. I would not be a Catholic priest. In his, as I mentioned the, the, his admonition to the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith a moment ago when he said to them, in the execution of this new initiative, I want you to be generous. And they displayed great generosity to many of us, maybe to no one more so than me personally. The reason why I say that is because, as I told Marcus Grodi in an interview that I had with him several years ago, I told him that I was the poster boy for canonical impediments. One of the things that we had to do in order to apply for ordination to the Holy See was to send them a, a, a dossier. My dossier was 28 pages long, and it included a, a, a form that was required by the Holy See, by the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, that was titled Canonical Impediments. The canonical impediments was simply a laundry list of nine canonical impediments that would stand in the way of a man being ordained as a Catholic priest. I had four of them. I, was, I had left the seminary in the 1960s. I had left the church in the 1970s. I had got married. I had, had become a Protestant minister and so forth and so on. So it would have been a very easy thing for the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith to simply give me an automatic no to my application for the priesthood. But because of Benedict's vision, because of his great magnanimity, and because of his admonition to them to be generous, they didn't say no, they said yes. They dispensed me from the sin of schism. Uh, the letter that I received from them actually started off telling me that, that I was dispensed from the sin of schism. When I read it, I cried like a baby. And then that was followed by a document signed by Benedict himself, which granted me permission to become a Catholic priest even as a married man. And so as I said this past Sunday, I owe my priesthood to this man, to Pope Benedict XVI. I will be forever, eternally indebted to him for what he did for us in the ordinariate, for what he did for us at Christ the King Parish, for what he did for me personally in allowing me to become a Catholic priest. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.